My name is Dr. Richard Golden. I am the inventor of the physics forceps. Throughout this video, many doctors, besides myself, will tell you how wonderful these instruments are and show you how they can be used. Each doctor is a little different in their procedures, but it's all based on the same technique. I want to thank you very much for your interest, and I hope that you purchase the set. I guarantee you'll be 100% satisfied. Hi, I am Dr. Louis Maltzmacher, and I've been a practicing general dentist for over 30 years. You are about to see some information on an extraction system that can literally change your practice. Let's face it, extractions are the building blocks to many other profitable procedures such as socket preservation and implants. If you are not doing an extraction, you are likely not doing implants and socket preservation in your practice. Exodontia is often the first step or building block to growing your practice and incorporating other procedures. With a growing and aging population requiring extractions, there's simply no reason to not perform difficult extractions in your practice, followed by socket preservation and ultimately offering implants. You can't afford not to implement the physics forceps into your practice today. For many of us, extractions are scheduled at the end of the day when we are not sure how much time it's going to take to achieve an extraction. This system that you're about to see has made extractions a very predictable procedure in a very short amount of time. Once you get this technique down, this will deliver the tooth every time, even if there is no crown present and most often with no buckle bone damage. Extractions happen in a matter of minutes. I would invite you to listen closely. The information you're about to review can have a really significant impact on your practice every single day. When we're talking about dental implants, we're talking about removing non-restorable teeth. And removing teeth has always been a difficult thing for many practitioners. I've been using the physics forceps for quite a while now, and I find that it's just an, a magical piece of equipment. It allows me to easily remove very damaged teeth without damaging the bone surrounding those teeth. And that's very critical for implant placement and socket grafting. We want to maintain that buckle plate as much as possible. The, the forcep is a, is a wonderful tool that my patients have responded very positively to. I had a patient the other day who warned me before I was taking out a very, very damaged tooth that the last tooth she had taken out, the dentist literally put his knee on her chest to remove it. And so she expected a very, very difficult extraction. I was done in a matter of minutes using the physics forcep and she was amazed. She literally teared up in the chair and gave me a big hug. She was so happy that it was an easy extraction. So it's an amazing instrument. I say it's magic, uh, and I say that to my staff every time I use it. It's just magic. It's something that is, is so special, and I strongly recommend that if you don't have it in your armamentarium, that you, you do have it, because it'll make your life that much easier. The physics forceps allows us to be effective and efficient um, but most importantly, it allows us to maintain the buckle plate of bone. Not only do I do full mouth extractions in my practice, um, but I also place implants. And so it's essential to try and maintain that buckle plate when thinking of placing implants in the future. When implementing the physics forcep, the first step is to take the beak of the forceps and engage it into the lingual or palatal aspect of the tooth such as this. Notice I don't want to squeeze when I do this uh, type of motion. The next thing I'm going to do is take the um, bumper of the forceps and place it as apically as possible in the uh, muco fold or the vestibule fold. You're going to go ahead and make a lever motion such as this. And a lot of dentists have a tendency to want to squeeze. We don't want to squeeze, um, otherwise you will crack the buccal plate of bone. What you want to do is engage that tooth and then use a lever action and put some pressure on it. And what I found in my practice when I utilize this instrument is after about 20 seconds of putting force on this, the periodontal ligament is separated and then all of a sudden the tooth will loosen up and that's when we either A, will take a cotton forcep or take our fingers with gauze and pull the tooth out. It's as simple as that. One of the things that I found with the physics forceps that it doesn't matter what size dentist implements it into their practice whether you're a muscular dentist 
or you're a small size dentist, or even if you're a male or female dentist, um, by using the levers, the biomechanics of this forcep allow you to take any tooth out without having to put so much force onto the tooth or to have to put your knee into the patient's chest that we've heard so many times in our practice from um, existing patients. Some dentists may be overwhelmed from the cost uh, at first glance, but when you look at the time that it's gonna save you, um, the fact that it's an atraumatic extraction, I think you'll find that the physics forceps is definitely worth it. First, open the instrument wide. Then, engage the beak deep on the lingual aspect of the root. Next, set the bumper at the mucogingival junction. Note the fixed position of the hand on the instrument. Do not squeeze the handles. Slowly apply pressure, rolling in an arc, towards the buckle to accomplish an occlusal lift. Using wrist movement only, disengaging it from the socket. At the first sign of movement, or what is commonly referred to as the pop, stop, the instrument has performed its intended use. Now you can use an instrument of choice to grasp and remove the tooth from the socket. The physics forceps are available in three different series of instruments. The standard series, the molar series, and a pedodontic series. The standard series includes the following four instruments that are designed specifically for each section of the mouth. A lower universal, an upper left, an upper anterior, and an upper right. The lower universal is used for teeth number 18 through 31. The upper left is used for teeth number 12 through 15. The upper anterior is used for teeth number 6 through 11. And the upper right is used for teeth number 2 through 5. The standard series set will generally allow you to extract all teeth in the mouth with the exception of third molars. In some instances, you may not be able to access hard to reach second molars depending on the patient. The molar series should be utilized in these instances. The molar series includes the following two instruments that are designed specifically for erupted third molars and hard to reach second molars that you may not be able to access with the standard series. The molar series consists of just two instruments, the EZ1 and the EZ2, where each instrument is used on the opposing arch or contralateral arch. This series utilizes the same patented beak and bumper technique as the standard series, but have an innovative design to access the posterior regions of the mouth easier. The molar series allows for placement of the bumper on the buccal or lingual aspect of the tooth, which is unique to the molar series. Lastly, the physics forceps are available in a pedodontic series, which is comprised of the same instruments as the standard series set but they are 30% smaller in size. i like to share with you another exciting video showing the extraction using the physics forceps. How predictable, atraumatic, and easy these extractions can be. So please watch and learn. So today we're going to do another full mouth extraction using the innovative physics forceps. So why don't we start with the central incisor. These teeth are very decayed, and uh, let's show you the technique. I'm going to use my left hand. I'm a right-handed dentist, but for video demonstration, it might be clear for you to see the using my left hand. And again, we're videotaping, so I apologize for, for any uh, inconsistencies. So what I have is the beak engaged onto the palatal surface and the bumper high up the vestibule as possible. Then I'm simply using really just two fingers or a finger and a thumb and I'm rotating my wrist. Rotating my wrist. There's no forearm pressure. There's no bicep pressure. I'm just rotating my wrist slowly, slowly, slowly rotating my wrist towards me. Not moving my arm, not squeezing like a typical forcep but simply rotating my wrist, rotating my wrist. And it may take a minute or two, 
which is a long time for us general dentists. And again, you can see I'm really putting no pressure on the forceps. I'm not squeezing it. I'm simply rotating my wrist. Okay, take a minute or two. some movement and I'm just rotating a little bit more and you can actually see the tooth move a little bit. Now the forcep is not intended to remove the tooth in total rather to it creates hyaluronidase which simply um, breaks down the PDL fibers or the septal fibers which allows extraction. Now I'm also going to put implants in this area. So the buckle plate is very important to me. And I'm just simply rotating, rotating, and look at the length of that tooth. That's got to be an inch long. And the buckle plate is totally intact. So just an amazing extraction. Let's do an anterior one first um, to demonstrate. And our patient knows if anything I do bothers her, she's just going to go ahead and raise her hand. So what I'm demonstrating is I have the beak of the physics forcep engaged on the lingual surface of the root. I have the bumper engaged on the facial surface deep into the vestibule. There's not a lot of room here. And I'm really holding this forcep with two fingers. And if you could just uh, scan back a little bit, Kristen, that would be wonderful. And just to show my hands and how I'm really holding it with a thumb and one finger. And this is just a leverage finger. And what I'm doing is simply rotating my wrist. No arm pressure at all, no bicep pressure at all. I'm just rotating my wrist towards the facial rotating my wrist towards the facial. I'm not using this like a typical forcep, so there's no force here. Okay, you can get back close up there. And I'm rotating, and now it may take a minute. Now that's a long time for a dentist. I'm gonna have you turn your head just a little bit towards Marina. There you go. And you can see the tooth, and I'm just rotating my wrist, rotating my wrist. Gotta take your time here. Can you lift your chin up just a little bit for me? Just give me a little more room there. Not really putting a lot of pressure at all. Now I felt the tooth, you can see it's starting to move a little bit. It's coming. It's coming. Lift your chin up just a little hair for me. Beautiful. And that tooth just elevated right out of the socket. Now granted, this is an anterior tooth and you know, what's the big deal? Um, it is a big deal. There's not a lot of tooth structure there in some of these teeth and you can see there was no physical force at all with my hands or my arms. It really is magic and um, it's something that I truly appreciate as a tool in the office. The GMX 400 series are two instruments used primarily for first, second, and third molars. Many doctors have difficulty using the standard set on second and third molars. The GMX 400 
allows you get, to get back there on the buckle or the lingual. We are now going to demonstrate the GMX 400 series on models so you can see how easy the procedure really is. The GMX 400 series is a two instrument series that's similar to the standard Golden Physics Forceps uh, instruments, but it's a little bit different. Uh, it's two instruments. You can still engage the palatal surface of a maxillary tooth, putting the bumper in the vestibule and rotating your wrist, but a little bit differently than the standard series. It's more like turning a doorknob and simply luxating the tooth out of position. It can be used contralaterally if we go to the mandibular aspect and engage the lingual surface again and simply luxate the tooth out of position. What's different about it is that we can also use the GMX 400 series where the bumper engages the palatal surface of a tooth and the beak engages the facial surface and if needed we could rotate or luxate the tooth towards the palate or towards the lingual. Today we're going to demonstrate the use of the innovative Golden Physics 400 series posterior forceps. We're going to be removing the mandibular second molar tooth which had been endodontically treated and it was determined to be non-restorable. Uh, it has a crown on it now but there's some decay and a fracture. So our plan today is to remove the tooth atraumatically, maintaining the buccal plate and then placing an implant immediately if possible. We'll also be grafting the posterior or the distal root uh, of the tooth. So we're engaging the beak onto the lingual surface of the tooth and you can see how nicely the instrument fits into the shallow vestibule. And I'm simply rotating my wrist, not squeezing like you would a normal force out. And it may take a minute or two, so you have to be patient with this instrument. You see the tooth move a little bit. We're engaging it, moving a little bit. So the tooth kind of jumped out of the socket and we'll use our little um, instrument to grab onto it and simply rotate it back out of the socket. And you can see the buccal plate is totally intact. The buccal plate is totally intact and we were able to remove a difficult extraction very, very simply. Today we have a patient who presents to our office in an emergency situation with a failing maxillary right second bicuspid tooth number four and the radiograph indicates a, a um, angulation on the root. We also have a fracture in this tooth if we can pick this up. So we want to take this tooth out as atraumatically as possible. And to do that, we're going to use the physics forceps. We'll use the maxillary right physics forcep to extract tooth number four with the hope of placing an immediate implant today. The maxillary right second bicuspid has significant inflammation. So prior to extraction, I'm going to flatten out the palatal root structure a little bit. So I'm just using a high speed. 
open big for me, sir. And I'm going to just flatten the root structure about five, six millimeters on the palatal. The Physics Forcep, it has a green bumper on it. That bumper will be on the buccal or facial aspect of the bone as far up the vestibule as possible. The flattened edge will engage the lingual part of the tooth. Can big for me, sir? Now what I'm doing is holding the forcep rather lightly and rotating my wrist. There's no arm pressure. It's a simple rotation of the wrist. Slowly. And you saw that little pop. And I'm just going to take a another force up and simply remove the tooth and the infection. Go ahead if you can rinse the um, section. And you can see the infection, you can see the fracture, and we got the root out in one piece. Amazing. Magical. Hello, my name is John Suzuki. I'm professor of periodontology and oral implantology at Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We've started using the physics forceps for extractions, especially atraumatic extractions. In our graduate periodontology clinic, we find them to be invaluable at beginning the atraumatic extraction process. Hi, I'm Dr. Helena Perez. I'm the chairman of the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery here at Uni University of Detroit Mercy Dental School. Um, the advantage of these instruments is because um, using a biomechanical advantage to take the teeth out rather than just your strength, it doesn't matter how strong you are. If the instrument is used properly, you get leverage and um, difficult extractions can be done uh, very efficiently. 1230 somebody calls. Emergency patient, right? How long has it bothered you? Three weeks, okay? But today's an emergency, right? I mean, that, that happens all the time, okay? All infected down here, six, seven teeth. That, that have to come out, right? Including two very long cuspids, okay? So in the past, okay, let them come in. In the past, they would come in, I would medicate them, and I'd be on my way. Now, I get them numb, and literally, I'm like this, I had six or seven in my hand, and I was out by one o'clock, okay? Pretty quick, they're very quick. Peritomes are good, okay? I mean, a lot of those things are good. Whatever works best in your hands, this will work a lot faster, especially if you've given up on surgery. You should be doing this in your practice. There is no question um, about it. Okay, what we're going to do today is extract a non-restorable tooth number seven, a maxillary right lateral incisor that had a root canal and a post. And as you could see from the radiograph, we had a failure of the tooth structure. We're going to use the maxillary anterior physics forceps. I'm a right-handed dentist, but I'm going to use my left hand in removing this tooth. So let's see if we can reposition it. You can see the little beak will go on the lingual surface of the tooth as deep palatally onto the root surface as possible. Then we have a bumper, the green bumper, which will be on the buccal vestibule. Again, as high apical or as high into the, into the sulcus as possible. So let's see if we can reposition this. And I'm using my left hand here, and I'm a right-handed dentist. 
I'm just going to hold a little purchase point here. Now you can see I'm not using a lot of pressure on my fingers, on my hand, or on my arm at all. And I'm just slowly rotating my wrist, ever so slowly. Now this is difficult for a dentist because we're used to grabbing onto things and really tugging and pulling. But we're allowing the PDL to change for hyaluronidase acid to form, which will reduce the PDL and hopefully extract the tooth atraumatically. And I'm just rotating my wrist. I'm really just using two fingers here, as you can see. Slowly, slowly, slowly rotating my wrist. It's starting to give a little bit. This is a crown, so sometimes a crown comes off first, but it's starting to come. And see the tooth move a little bit. Wow, and it just snapped. This is really magical. And then I'll just take a an instrument to grab onto the root structure and finish. the atraumatic extraction of a non-restorable tooth. And here you can even see the posts poking through. Really magic. I've been teaching at the University of Detroit Mercy Dental School and I introduced the physics force up to the students. I have had a great reaction from the students. The ones uh, who want to try something different besides the conventional forceps have found them very easy to use. Um, they like the fact that they can do the more difficult extractions instead of giving them to the residents since no surgery is involved. So they've been taking them on their mission trips and they've been taking them to uh, the UHC, the hospital clinics where we do so many extractions and they find that they can do them simply and efficiently and uh, they're wanting to use them all the time now. They're their go-to instruments. I urge you to understand the technique, the procedure, and also if you have the time, we offer courses at the University of Detroit Dental School five to six times a year on a Saturday. If you're interested, look on our website and sign up. Thank you very much for your interest in learning about the physics forceps. Not only are they fantastic and they work atraumatically, we are offering you a 90-day money-back guarantee. Use them for 90 days. If you're not 100% satisfied, send them back and we will happily refund your money. For more information and to watch several more clinical videos, please visit physicsforceps.com or call 1-877-987-2284.